Okay. Eh silakan eh ya. Silakan 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 silakan. <laughs> Oke. Okay. So um, assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning everyone. Uh, so welcome to the viral four, viral four ya. Yeah. Um, and uh, as previously we have like. Uh, journal publication and also editing process lesson <laughs> or material uh, or presentation. Now we are going to talk about a uh, certain related to uh, informal digital learning. But before that, um, I want to uh, let me uh, greet all the participants. So welcome to the final four. Uh, and we will use uh, English thing. But maybe one of the speakers, salah satu narasumber, uh, will you will mix akan campur nanti bahasa and uh, English. So don't worry about that. And um, uh, now we are having two um, amazing speakers with us. Uh, the first one we have uh, Professor Lee Juso. <laughs> oh, I. Yes, <laughs> Oh, he's Korean. That is, he, he's the Korean, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, you may. Hello, hello. <laughs> and then uh, the second one, we have um, Dr. Nur Arifa uh, Rajati. Maybe uh, her now with a beautiful uh, veil today. Yeah, selamat pagi. Good morning, everybody. Okay. Um, so before we start, Uh, I just want to remind you to stay uh, mute for your uh, audio. And then later on, we will let you unmute if you do have any questions. And before we start, uh, I just want to remind you that we have um, two sessions. The first one will be the presentation session. And each speaker, each, each um, speaker will have like 30 minutes to talk about uh, the topic. And then after that, uh, we will have Q and A question and answer session. Uh, <clears throat> you may talk, you may speak directly later on in question and answer session. Or if you have any questions, kalau sudah mulai punya pertanyaan while they are <clears throat> presenting the the topic, then you may chat in the chat box pertanyaannya, and then we can uh, try to we can uh, let the speakers try to answer one by one. Uh, before we go to the first session, and maybe we will have uh, uh, we'll have the welcoming remark, remarks from the host, uh, uh, Language Center of EIN Kendari, the head of Language Center of EIN Kendari, to Dr. Ahmad. Uh, time is yours, sir. Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <clears throat> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, dear all participants. First of all, I would like to thank the Master of Ceremony, Miss Dewi Atika, for giving me a great honor of to deliver welcome speech in this good uh, opportunity. Um, on behalf of the Board of Language Center, of State Islamic Institute of Kendari, Yayan Kendari, I welcome you all and thank you very much for your coming to this webinar. Especially the speaker in this webinar, Prof. Ju Seong Lee. Thank you, Prof. Hello. From Hong Kong, okay. From Hong Kong Korean. <laughs> and Dr. Nur Arifa Drajati. Pagi, Bu. Pagi, Pak. We realize that English without practicing will be nothing. Practicing without certain target and systematic program by technology will be not have much uh, sense. They are all participants by attending such kind of meeting. I am sure you will get a lot of advantage. You can improve your English, especially theme of uh, idol informal digital learning of uh, English. Please do participate in this golden opportunity and I hope your participation 
will bring some benefit. Okay, let me speak bahasa to explain this uh, program. Uh, Bapak Ibu, terima kasih untuk kehadirannya di webinar kali ini. Ini adalah rangkaian uh, kegiatan UPT Pengembangan Bahasa Language Center, Pairal, dari sesi pertama hingga sesi yang keempat, dan ini adalah sesi yang terakhir. Kami usung dari sejak awal ada dua tema yang kita bawa. Uh, yang pertama adalah bagian dari academic writing, bagaimana penulisan bahasa, penulisan artikel, dengan kemampuan bahasa yang baik, bagaimana penyusunan-penyusunan artikel, itu telah kami lakukan di viral pertama dan kedua. Uh, karena menjadi kebanggaan kami di IAIN Kendari bahwa di UPT Pengembangan Bahasa ada jurnal uh, Langkawi uh, yang merupakan representasi uh, bagaimana pengelolaan uh, jurnal yang uh, relatif lebih baik, sehingga kemudian uh, Langkawi ini Alhamdulillah sudah uh, dengan akreditasi Sinta 2. Kemudian di viral 3 dan 4, kami fokus pada teknologi kebahasaan. Dari teknologi kebahasaan ini, kami usung dua bahasa, yang viral 3 kemarin kita fokus pada bahasa Arab, Al-Lughatul Arabiya, teknologi Al-Lughatul dan kemudian pada kesempatan yang terakhir ini, viral yang keempat, insya Allah diisi dengan pengembangan teknologi pengajaran dalam bahasa Inggris, Tema yang kami usung adalah IDLE, Informal Digital Learning of English. Uh, Mudah-mudahan apa yang telah kami suguhkan sejak sesi pertama sampai terakhir ini memberikan manfaat untuk kita semua, uh, para partisipan yang menyempatkan hadir dan para pendengar. Dan kami sampaikan dari sejak awal hingga saat ini, sudah cukup banyak teman-teman yang berpartisipasi. Kami data kurang lebih sekitar mungkin 3 sampai 4 ribuan, 3 ribuan sampai 4 ribuan peserta yang mengikuti kegiatan kami ini dan juga menyaksikan di YouTube channel YouTube kami. Uh, terakhir yang kami sampaikan ucapan terima kasih dan mewakili seluruh sivitas akademika IAIN Kendari mengucapkan terima kasih banyak untuk seluruh uh, semangat dan keinginan untuk bergabung bersama kami sekali lagi mudah-mudahan ada manfaat yang dihadirkan. Terima kasih. Thank you for all. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Ahmad, for uh, the lovely uh, welcoming remarks. And then uh, now we are going to, for the efficiency of our time, then we are going to uh, start with the presentation. But before that, let me uh, tell you more about our amazing speakers. Uh, I'll start with the first speaker, me, uh, Professor Lee Jusong from the Education University of Hong Kong, but he is Korean. And then uh, he's now the Associate Head of English Language Education Department. He received uh, her P his PhD from University of Illinois, uh, America. And then um, he is writing a lot of uh, scientific articles. So if you do have any questions related to the uh, article journals, then this is the good time. Uh, one, one of his uh, research interests is informal digital learning, like what the topic, what is uh, the topic today? Uh, digital learning of English and also digital learning of uh, Korean. Uh, he got a lot of paper publications and also he's also writing uh, many chapters in book uh, published by uh, really popular uh, publishers. And then uh, the second speaker is uh, Dr. Dr. Nur Arifa Drajati, as I said uh, earlier, that uh, she, is, uh, she is now a lecturer in Universitas 11 Maret, Indonesia. So we have two different uh, countries today. And then uh, she received uh, her doctoral degree from Universitas Negeri Jakarta, especially uh, language education. As, as I said again, if you do have like any questions related to um, English as international language or language education, then uh, our two amazing speakers will answer it like um, very well. So, uh, and one more thing. Um, Ms. Nur Arifah Darajati is actually uh, doing a lot of like oral presentation uh, in some countries. 
for example, in some cities and countries like Cambodia and also Singapore and Indonesia and many other uh, cities. Uh, I think uh, I won't say more about that. If you type uh, their names on Google and then you will find uh, a lot of uh, research publication and also article publication uh, uh, of their works. So um, now we are moving on to the presentation session. Maybe I will um, hand over to uh, Professor Lee to start uh, this webinar today. Time is, you, time is yours, sir. 안녕하세요. 반가워요. 안녕하세요. <laughs> of course, I'm not going to do it anymore. <laughs> uh, can you see the screen? Yep, yep. Uh. Uh, thank you so much for your warm introduction and uh, warm uh, greeting. I really appreciate this great opportunity to interact with the passionate Indonesian, the foreign language, uh, the scholars and the practitioners. I'll really do my best to make our time together something of value to you and Indonesian foreign language uh, community. Uh, we are under this topic, informal digital learning environment, uh, theory and uh, practice. I'm going to spend 30 minutes on this topic. So uh, informal digital learning of English uh, or IDLE uh, can be understood as self-directed naturalistic digital learning of English in unstructured out-of-class environments independent of a formal language uh, program. And this table will help you uh, conceptually understand what IDLE is. And this activity, the key, of this concept is these activities are motivated by the personal interest and undertaken independently uh, it, without uh, being evaluated by the teachers. Personally, I became interested in this topic uh, in 2014 when I uh, visited Morocco to help my supervisor, the Mark Dressman's uh, the work. And although there were many uh, valuables that influenced this uh, phenomenon, uh, our uh, primary uh, finding was the Moroccan students are actively engaged in these either activities uh, independently of their teachers. Uh, in contrast, the Korean students uh, were heavily uh, dependent upon the formal in-class learning. Uh, this is when I have uh, started looking into this topic. Informal uh, idol can be understood uh, compared uh, against the formal education of English. Uh, it takes place outside of the classroom and there are rich authentic uh, materials available 24 seven and students can practice this uh, in a very low, uh, uh, low effective uh, filter environment. But in the classroom, uh, there are limited and artificial resources and Time is also limited uh, and students anxiety level is uh, generally high. And the second language acquisition uh, takes, doesn't take place uh, according to a linear order when you practice idle activities. And the L2 activity, the second language interaction happens in an unpredictable fashion. In contrast, uh, the formal education of English uh, it's a structure by the teacher and the language acquisition, they believe, happens according to the timetable or fixed the timetable. And there's no meaningful context and the interaction uh, takes place in a predictable manner. Through either activity, uh, a second language can be learned through both intentional and unintentional. In other words, uh, planned it or unplanned it, consciously or unconsciously. Uh, in, in contrast, the formal education of English can be taught uh, through uh, intentional learning. And either activity uh, is driven by the students. Uh, they, are the, uh, they are in charge of this activity, but students in the classroom are often uh, perceived as a uh, used learner, English learner. So they are generally passive learner in the classroom setting. So I think, so idle activity uh, really prepare our students to deal with the surprises uh, 
whereas this education of English in the classroom prepare our students to cope with the certainty. Uh, so this is a, a big difference. Some distinguished scholars, uh, such as uh, David Noonan and Gatwin Jones, have recognized the value of this either related practice, such as language learning and activation outside of the classroom offers challenges and opportunities and that are not available inside the classroom. The abundance and affordability and attractiveness of online materials and communities today in multiple languages obviates the necessity to learn a L2 in a classroom setting. Uh, Bu Arifa and I have uh, gone uh, really deep down into uh, this topic. And in a broad sense, we uh, categorized, uh, we classify these idle activities into two different types, the receptive idle activities and productive idle activities. So receptive idle activity is an activity where students consume the English content, whereas the productive idle activity is an activity where students generate or produce contents in English. Interest in this topic is global and increasing. Uh, let's look at uh, some of the book titles, uh, the Beyond the Language Learning, uh, Beyond the Language Classroom, um, the Online Informal Learning of English, um, Extra Mula English in uh, Teaching and Learning, and Handbook of Informal Learning of Language. Um, the mainstream, uh, art, uh, mainstream journals, uh, the SLA journals, or e-learning journals such as Calico and Language Learning and Teaching, uh, uh, Language Learning and Technology, have published a special issue on this topic. And the uh, mainstream e-learning uh, uh, journal, such as uh, British Journal of Educational Technology have also published this issue. Triple um, AL and ILA have uh, organized their consortium and symposium on this topic for the first time uh, this year, although uh, both events have been canceled due to the pandemic. And for your information, TISO Journal is uh, presently working on this special issue, uh, like in incidental and informal vocabulary learning. So if you're interested in this topic, you can submit your proposal at the moment. The Language Learning and Teaching Beyond the Classroom, or LBC, uh, is a, a broad construct that can embrace a variety of similar concepts that highlight this emerging phenomenon. And this LBC uh, can be divided into two types, the LBC offline and online, and LBC online. Very briefly, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, some uh, either related concepts. Uh, first concept is informal language learning. Uh, here, important part is the second language can be done uh, intentionally and unintentionally. So that's the key. And this concept is synonymous with the Dressman's concept of informal language learning. Uh, he, defined, he defined it as a, any activities taken consciously or unconsciously by a learner outside of formal instruction that leads to an increase in the learner's ability to communicate in a second language. How about Duolingo? So he argued that although language learning applications such as Duolingo provide formal program instruction, these L2 activities are considered as informal language learning because learners are in charge of this activity. But there are some scholars who uh, have a who have slightly different perspective for uh, language learning application like Duolingo. Uh, for example, uh, Solo and Joro believe that the language uh, learning uh, learning does not take place within a digital context, 
or community with the primary goal of language teaching and learning, like, such as Duolingo. So uh, depending on the scholars uh, orientation and their perspective, they have a, a different definition or understanding of this phenomenon. Informal second language learning uh, is conceptualized as the taking place uh, activity that taking place not in formal learning environments, but through learners interactions with online media of their own choice in their free time. And ISLL can also be uh, done intentionally and unintentionally. Extramural English, or EE, -E, uh, is defined as any type of contact that young people, uh, or young, young learners, have with English outside of the walls of the classroom. And the contact uh, or involvement is volunteer on the part of the learner. So uh, they also uh, recognize this activity that can be done uh, autonomously or uh, intentionally or unintentionally. But interestingly, uh, although EE -E, uh, embrace both online and offline activities, uh, their articles and publication, their articles and uh, their work have mostly uh, focused on the online uh, extramural English activities, such as um, district, playing district games, watching TV, listening to music, and watching films and using the internet. Same is true for uh, this recreational language learning, which is understood as a learning that is not motivated by academic or professional advancement, and as a rec recreational leisure activity. And they uh, compare learners uh, who, are do who are practicing recreational language learning in 2010 and 2015. So in 2010, uh, they engaged in both all like non-digital activity and digital activity. But in 2015, five years later, uh, they found that uh, the learners engaged in only recreational digital practices. Uh, again, this concept is embraced both offline and online, but, uh, but in their research, they focus uh, mostly on this online uh, language learning activity, which is closely aligned with the idol. fully autonomous self-instructed uh, learners, or FASL, uh, is understood as a learners who had acquired the majority of their English through informal contact with the language and who had very limited formal instruction. Uh, this concept is actually influenced by the creation, Steve Creation's uh, theory. So the fossils uh, tend to acquire L2, the second language, subconsciously. So they, uh, they focus mostly on the subconscious uh, the learning. Rather than a conscious learning. So they believe that the second language acquisition had begun as a byproduct of their committed engagement with the former uh, source of English such as uh, television and music, which they have access online. Empirically, IDOL have uh, several pedagogical benefits in terms of uh, affective and cognitive and linguistic and English as international language uh, outcomes. Uh, today, uh, uh, let's uh, discuss the role of the IDOL on the English enjoyment uh, why? <laughs> why English enjoyment? Uh, because the emotions in second language acquisition are, are thriving. Uh, so uh, the SLA uh, research researchers have begun shifting um, 
shifting their focus from the negative emotions, such as uh, anxiety, to the positive emotions, uh, such as uh, English language enjoyment, or the second language learning enjoyment, influenced by this positive psychology movement. Um, during the past two or three decades, we have focused mostly on these negative uh, emotions. Um, ah, excuse me, past four decades, <laughs> yes. And uh, as, you, uh, as indicated uh, in this uh, slide, uh, foreign language classroom anxiety has been uh, cited uh, over 5,000 times. Uh, However, uh, as I mentioned earlier, influenced by a positive psychology movement, the positive psychology in SLA is gaining popularity. Uh, very briefly, uh, the Serik uh, Man and Mihai Chik and Mihai uh, def have, uh, have indicated that positive psychology uh, thrives to advance our knowledge of how normal people flourish under more benign uh, conditions. And they uh, seem to focus more on the positive aspect of life rather than the negative. And it has uh, make a significant impact uh, uh, on the SLA right now, uh, not only to the uh, students, who are learning foreign language, but also the teachers. So, um, so we are beginning to pay attention to the well well being of the second language teacher. And if you are interested in this topic, I'd like to direct you to this topic, uh, this article uh, published in the Modern Language uh, Journal. And Theoretically, it's underpinned, strongly underpinned by the Broden and Bill theory, uh, which is understood as the positive emotions, uh, the Broden on individual's momentary mindset, and by doing so, help to build enduring personal uh, resources. For example, uh, the foreign language learners who, uh, who enjoy learning the foreign language uh, a lot, uh, tend to uh, tend to explore more opportunity to speak their uh, target language. And by doing so, uh, uh, in hand, it uh, improve and uh, to build their second language skills. Uh, this topic uh, is important, particularly in Asia, uh, because uh, as you can see, uh, Asian uh, second language learners reported the lowest <laughs> foreign language enjoyment and highest anxiety. Uh, so uh, the researchers uh, point out that cultural background uh, seems to influence the second language learners' emotions. Uh, 